How do you make a website interactive? That's one of the questions that many beginners ask and when they get stuck at. The first um, thing you want to ask yourself is what makes a website interactive, right? Does it become interactive when you click on things? Or does it become interactive when you can move things around with animations? For most people, the definition of being interactive is when both things happen. But technically, a website becomes interactive when it responds to a user in some way. So if you can click on something, or if um, you type on a keyboard and something happens, or if you say something and something happens, uh, then your website is interactive. So the question is, how do you know when does something happen? To answer the question, imagine you're thirsty right now, and you get up from your chair, from your computer, and you go and get water. In this case, there's a queue. Because you're thirsty, you grab water. That thirstiness is the cue. In web development, these cues are called events, and events can only be detected in JavaScript. So a click is an event, a keyboard key is an event, a scroll is an event, and so on. JavaScript allows you to listen to many kinds of events, including but not limited to mouse events, touch events, keyboard events, form events, scroll events, and so on and so forth. There are a lot of events out there. You can find a complete list of events on MDN's event reference, and that is this page. You'll find a link to the MDN event. You'll find a link to the MDN event reference in uh, the description below. To act on events, your program must be able to detect these events. And to do that, you use an event listener. To add an event listener, you first have to select the element with query selector. So if you look at this example over here, let's say we have a button and when we click on the button, we want something to happen. The first step is to select the button with query selector. Once you've selected the button, you can add an event listener to it. The syntax for add event listener looks like this, button.addEventListener. The first parameter you give to this um, add event listener method is the name of the event you are listening for. There are a lot of events as I mentioned before. In this video, I'm just going to use the click event, which is a very basic mouse event. If you're interested to learn to use the rest, I recommend you check out Learn JavaScript at learnjavascript.today. Um, I will include a link to that in the description below. In Learn JavaScript, I walk you through how to build 20 different components step by step, and you'll learn to use different kinds of events at the same time to make your site and the things you built much more interactive. Let's come back to the event listener. In this case, we pass a click as the first parameter. The second parameter is a function to execute when the event occurs. You can do anything you want in the callback function. Most of the time when you first begin, you want to lock something so you know that uh, the event is actually working. So you can do a console.log, hello, and when you save and refresh, and refresh, and click on the button, you see hello in the console. So that's how you know the event is actually working. Now, since you can do anything you want, you can also change the background color, or you can move the button anywhere you want, or you can add classes. It's up to you what you want to do. To change the background color, you can use the style property. So um, button.style.backgroundColor equals to red. And if you save and refresh, you see that this actually changes to red when you click on it. Most of the time, we don't want to change the style property because it kind of works like inline styles. If you can, try to use CSS classes. So what you can do is um, button.classless.add red, for example. So in this case, you will add a red class. If you look at the inspector and we, when you click on the button, you see that the class red is added to it. In this case, then you can go into your CSS file, change the background color to red. And when you click on the button again, it will change the red. Now to add some sort of animation, you can use the transition property, which is the easiest way to add animations. 
Now when you click on the button, you see a transition in the color. If you are watching this video from the future, you'll find a link to a CSS transitions tutorial in the description below. If you are watching this right now, wait till next Wednesday and I will send you the article for CSS transitions. So what we just said here was a super basic intro to events and how to create interactive components. With this info, you can already create um, a lot of different things, including things like a sidebar that stays outside of the window and when you click on the button, it transits inwards. This is something that's very, very easy to do. Now I teach you how to make components like that sidebar that you just seen earlier, plus many other advanced ones in Learn JavaScript where you, when you build the 20 components. If you want to find out more about Learn JavaScript, you can check out the link below as well. I'll include a link down there. Now, one more thing before we end this video. For now, we use the button variable directly in the function. That is okay when you're just starting out, but it's not a good way to make robust code. So just imagine if you refactor the function slightly and you move that function out of the event listener itself, Look at the function handle click in this case. When you look at the function, do you know what button is? We, well, we don't really know, right? And in this case, the button works because, in this case, the button still works because the variable is already declared when the function is called. But what happens if you change the button variable into something say, click me. If you refresh and try again, it doesn't work because button is not defined. It, it just kind of breaks things up. So a better way is to figure out what element you are handling the event with. And in JavaScript, you can use the this keyword. So if you refresh again and check it out, it works. If you console log this, you actually see that it's the button itself. That is one way to find the element that is listening to the event listener. Let's call that the listening element for short. The second way to find the listening element is to is through the event object. So the event object is an argument that is given to any event listener. You can console log event and you can see the entire event itself. To get the listening element you can use event dot current target and now if you refresh you can see that hey it's actually the same button as well of the two ways i would prefer event.current target because i tend to use arrow functions in my code because arrow functions allow me to write shorter and more concise code something like this it kind of looks a little bit weird to if you're not used to arrow functions but when you get used to it it is much, much better. And the problem is arrow functions changes the way this works, uh, the this keyword works. You can use this in event listeners to refer to the listening element. But the good thing is you can still use event.currentTarget. The funny thing about event.currentTarget is if you console.log event and you expand it out, you'll see that current target is actually now. Now, I have no idea why this happens. I was notified of it and I found, figured it out, but I kind of forgot about it. So if you're interested in finding out why this happens, you can go ahead and do so and leave a comment in the comment section. I'll be super grateful for you for that. Um, and that's it for today. I hope you learned something useful. If you like this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and I'll send you a video like this every Friday. What's better is for you to go to my website at zellwk.com. I'll include a link to that in the description below as well. And sign up over there. And I'll send you one article and one video every week to help you become a better front-end developer. With that, have a good weekend and I'll see you next week.